Welcome to another segment of ACRP TV. Today, our spotlight is on how sites can identify new trials and not just uh, any trials, but the right trials matching their strengths to the people they're working with. It's very difficult in this industry. Obviously, we're very science driven, it's research, but there's a human factor here that sometimes gets overlooked. Very, very important. And we're gonna to talk today with Jordan Story, who's the business development manager at Wake Research. They've got about 16 independent research sites uh, across the US. And Jordan's gonna to talk to us today about some of the things she's seen out there that help with recruiting and relationship, and that all important human factor. So Jordan, I first wanna thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, so let's jump right in. You know, as I said at the outset, this is about science, it's research, it's gotta be precise, you know, the science is key, but there's a human element here that sometimes gets overlooked and in, as in any, many other industries, most other industries, ultimately things are about relationships. So maybe if you could share with us, you know, based on your background at, at Wake and things you've seen, just talk about things in the recruiting area that you've seen as effective ways to, to build relationships and match the right sites to the right people. Absolutely. So Wake has 16 sites, as you said, and they, one of their unique things is that we are fully, we fully own our research facilities. They're not doctor's offices. We fully own them. We support them in advertising and regulatory all the way down. Um, we offer training to them and we, we really like that to be part of the way we bring things on. So something unique in this role is that we, as you kind of touched on, take the business development role as a relationship role. My job and my team's job is to network with pharmaceutical companies and CROs and create real relationships with them. These are science-minded people. And I've worked at, at other places where you're strictly focused on trial by trial by trial. What trial could we pull on? Whereas we find people and we try to connect with decision makers that would know a lot of trials. Therefore, when they can, when they're going into bid defense for a new trial, they already know who can, who, which sites are able to do which things. They know like Wake Research is strong in women's health. We could, five of their sites, we can already include in our bid defense. It makes the CRO's job easier and it makes our job easier because we already have that relationship. They already know who to contact and who to ask like, hey, based on this synopsis, can you do this? Could you look more into this? So it's kind of taking four steps out of the beginning piece because you have a relationship with that person. And I think it's super unique because it's such a science-minded industry. But if you take it from a sales perspective, like these are, we're identifying pain points and we're talking about, you know, what, where do you need sites and who has what capability? And it sense? sounds like part of your approach is uh, not, not a heavy sales emphasis or not all sales. And it, some of this to me sounds like it's about understanding the other person and taking the time to build that relationship, to understand really what they're about and what they need. You said pain points. So it's not like a quick generic kind of sale. It's building a, a, a lot lasting professional relationship. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Um, I mean, in the most professional way, we're trying very hard to be friends with these decision makers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you do the initial reach out like, hey, we have this and this. I know you get a ton of emails. Please talk to me. Um, but then over time, you learn how they like to be talked to. There's some people that are super granular. They need to hear nitty gritty. They want to talk about what type of freezers you have, what updates you're doing. And then there's people that are so high level. They just like talking. And I end up talking about Alabama football with them. And it's so about that's the sales piece. It's learning how each person likes to be talked to and creating a real relationship with them where they are totally comfortable sending you a non-formal email like, hey, how many sites could you have for pneumococcal vaccine potential? Or do you guys have anybody that could do a PK sample for cancer? And that's so important because then you're automatically in the running. You know, you're not, you're not canceled out early. You're included on things and it's just like this big circle that the relationship allows to create. It also sounds like at, when, it, when it's working well, and it sounds like this is generally working very well, you're, as I said, kind of at the very beginning, it's not a numbers game or it shouldn't be. You're not just trying to get a trial. You want to get a trial that matches your skills for both sides. Absolutely. Um, it, in the ideal sense way this works, the CROs and pharmaceutical companies would know ahead of time how many sites they could potentially have. They would be able to build the protocols around that. Like, and then we would know ahead of time what's coming up in the pipeline. Our sites are getting ready for it. I recently had something where somebody needed a BL2 cabinet. I had no idea what that was. Turns out we do have it. Um, 
but it was such a quick conversation to be able to ask like, Hey, do you guys have this? I know you can do all the other things. And because we have that relationship, we weren't canceled out. Whereas in other kind of feasibility stages, if, if they didn't know if you had it or not, you're not going to be included in that. But because, I'm, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm good. I'm sorry. But because you have that relationship, they're willing to ask those questions. Whereas in, in other instances in my professional life here, you're just not even included. If they don't think you have it, or if you don't have that kind of experience, they're not going to include you. Well, it almost sounds like conversations among colleagues, which is probably the ideal way. Do you think as an industry, we're getting better at this? I mean, I, I said at the beginning, it's a, you know, it's a science-driven industry as it needs to be. Obviously, things have to be precise. This is life and death. It's clinical research. You know, these medicines and devices and things have to work. And the science underneath them has to be very strong. But at the same time, it seems to me in the last few years as an industry, we've gotten a little better about recognizing the you know, emotional intelligence, the human factor, the need for building relationships. I mean, you guys are, are sort of living that. Are you seeing that more broadly or in this industry? Yes, definitely people are coming up more around to it. It's not just a trial by trial thing. Um, and I think the world is finding out so much more about it, especially with COVID. Like we were lucky enough to be involved in all of the vaccine trials. And that's something you can actually talk about with people that aren't involved in the industry. And I think that that's affecting everything because people now know a little bit more about clinical trials. It's not just so otherworldly that our group as a whole is talking more about it. It's becoming more mainstream to know about it. And I think that's really important because this is an industry that affects everyday life. Like you don't realize, but the medicines we take all came mm -hmm. through clinical trials and the relationships you're building have the, have the ability to impact real life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. This has been our ACRP TV spotlight on how sites can identify new trials. And the key here is the right new trials, the best matches. We've been speaking with Jordan Story, who's the business development manager at Wake Research. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me.